What's up, guys? Welcome to Chapter Thirty Eight: The Bipolar World. And this lesson will be talking about how the Cold War impacted the world we live in today. So let's begin. It begins with number one, which is the formation of a bipolar world. So it begins with the Cold War in Europe. And so after Europe in World War Two, there were many problems as many European countries were fragmented by the war. In Western Europe, the U.S. and allies such as Britain and France decided to step in, and they were mostly capitalist countries, and they wanted the West to stay that way as well. But on the eastern side was the Soviet Union, and they dominated all the Eastern European countries, and they had a communist government, and they hoped to do the same to Eastern Europe. And in one of these countries, the biggest divide was in Germany. Where, as you may remember, Germany lost World War Two, and so there were two groups who moved in, primarily the United States and the Soviet Union, and the Soviets held the eastern part of Germany and the western places like that were held by the U.S. and other countries such as Britain and France maintained their autonomy from the east, and so over here you can see that. Berlin was a city in East Germany, but it was divided just like Germany was divided into East and West Germany. And here you can see that there was a big problem from nineteen forty eight to nineteen forty nine, and that was the Berlin blockade and airlift. And basically, the Soviets decided to close off any modes of transportation into West Berlin because they wanted to take all of Berlin for themselves. But the U.S. and Britain and other Western allies decided to keep West Berlin standing by flying stuff in when all the roads were blocked off, and that was the Berlin blockade and airlift that followed. In this horribly drawn map of Germany, you can kind of see what the problem was. There was West Germany and there was also East Germany, but the whole city of Berlin was in East Germany. But the western part of Berlin, as you see here, we'll color it blue, was maintained by the West. But it was hard for the West to get into West Berlin without going through East Germany first. So the Russians basically wanted to close off all of East Berlin in hopes of. Well, well, actually, closing off all of West Berlin in hopes of absorbing it into East Berlin and all of Eastern Germany. That didn't really work out though because of the airlift. So right after there were problems such as refugees wanting to go from East to West Germany because West Germany was more prosperous as it was capitalist. So as a result, the Soviets built up a wall, and that became known as the Berlin Wall. And that wall was only in the city of Berlin. And so we can draw a wall here, and it was between East and West Berlin, and it separated the two parts of the city. And so this continued for so many years, and the Allied nations didn't really like this, but they didn't want to object because they didn't want like a World War Three. And also at this time, there was a parallel nuclear arms race. So both sides, the United States and Russia, or the USSR. They were trying to get massive amounts of arms, and these arms were nuclear, and they had huge weapon stockpiles, and they both told each other that they were going to basically mutually destroy each other if that was necessary. So it was a pretty tough time to live in. In Korea and Cuba, there were standoffs between the U.S. and USSR, although it wasn't direct. Such、so、as in Korea. There was the Korean War, and this was basically when the North Koreans, with the aid of Soviets, decided to try to unify the Korean Peninsula, and they did that by crossing over the thirty eighth parallel, as shown in this horribly drawn map of Korea. And basically, what happened in the Korean War was the the North Koreans wanted to unify, so they went from their place. They crossed the thirty eighth parallel, which was dividing North and South Korea, and they went all the way to Seoul, which is the South Korean capital. They got there, but then U.S. and U.N. forces turned them back, and they pushed them all the way up to the border of China. Well, now China didn't like it because now North Korea was going to go into China territory. So they decided to aid the North Koreans and push back to the thirty eighth parallel. 
once they pushed back here, it was basically a ceasefire, and that was it for the Korean War. But basically, there was just a lot of back and forth, but eventually no one really gained anything. And today, that's still the case. Back in the West, there were problems such as the domino theory, which many people believe that if one country falls to communism, others would too. So that's why people wanted to intervene and limit communism in the Eastern countries. In Cuba, the Castro brothers rose up and they took basically communistic control of the country. And the U.S. didn't really like this. And so they tried to do something called the Bay of Pigs. And basically, it was former Cuban citizens that had gone to the U.S. They decided to get together and try to retake the island. And it was sponsored by the CIA, of course, but it ultimately failed. And as a result of failing, the U.S. prestige in Latin America went down. And a similar thing happened a bit later in the Cuban Missile Crisis. So basically, the Soviets built up nuclear missile bases in Cuba. And as you may know, Cuba is only 90 miles from Key West and Florida. So it's really close to U.S. territory. And the U.S. wasn't happy. So Kennedy, President Kennedy blockaded Cuba and demanded removal of the missiles. And after tense two weeks, the Russians finally decided to back down, and then as a result, Kennedy also pledged not to overthrow Castro, which he planned to do in the Bay of Pigs invasion, which was barely only a year earlier. And so these problems continued in the U.S. They were battling their own problems, such as black nationalism. Um, this was a big time for the U.S. civil rights movement, and there were many important people, such as Martin Luther King Jr., and Rosa Parks, who really wanted basically the end of segregation, even though slavery had been abolished so many years before. And another big one was the U.S. Supreme Court said that segregated schools were not allowed, and that was Brown versus the Board of Education. And that was a monumental case because now everyone can go to the same public schools. Another problem was space race. Basically, this was just like the arms race. It was to see who could get to space first. And after Stalin died in 1953, a new guy came aboard, and his name was Khrushchev, and he basically ruled Russia for the years after. In France, similar things happened. Charles de Gaulle took power, and he didn't really want to be involved in the mess with the U.S. and the Soviets. So he kind of wanted his own French little land, and he got lots of that, and he wanted Europe free from superpower domination. Similar things happened in Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia didn't really like the Soviet influence, and so they got kicked out in 1948, and they were non-aligned. In China, the communists, after World War II, continued their civil war with the nationalists, and eventually, they kicked Chiang Kai-shek and his nationalists over to Taiwan in 1948. And that's how you get the two modern countries. The modern country of China, of course, is the People's Republic of China. And as time went on, China accepted some direction from Moscow. But eventually, they gave it up after 14 years because of multiple reasons. And eventually, China turned sort of to the West. Over there in the Soviets and the U.S., they were seeing that this Cold War was sort of escalating and they wanted to kind of tone down the big problems. So they had detente, which is superpowers basically de-escalating their problems. And to help, they had two treaties. One, They were both called SALT, which is Strategic Arms Limitation Talks. And they signed those and that helped a little bit, but not totally, because just years later, the U.S. started selling weapons to China, and so the Soviets weren't too happy, so they invaded Afghanistan and took that land. But once again, the U.S. was involved with more problems, such as in Vietnam, and they wanted the non-communist government in South Vietnam to take power because, you know, domino theory. But it didn't really work out, and the U.S. left, and eventually North Korea took the whole nation and made it communist. These problems continued, so the Soviets 
they took their land in Afghanistan, but eventually they were they left out uh near the end of their sort of ruling and that led to the Taliban coming in. Through all of these problems, there were countercultural protests, so you see people like the hippies and the peace signs. These are all things that came out of Vietnam and the bloodshed there. And lots of problems basically that we can still see today. So toward the end of the Cold War, there's people who stepped up. One was Mikhail Gorbachev. He was a Soviet leader, and he basically wanted to change the Soviet Union away from communism. He didn't intend to, but that was the ultimate result. And as part of his reforms, communist regimes were taken down across Eastern and Central Europe. And in Czechoslovakia, they had changes too. And finally, in 1989, Germany was reunited when the Berlin Wall was taken down. And specifically, the reforms were definitely economic and political, such as perestroika, which was they were trying to restructure the economy. They were trying to not let the government maintain their decentralized state economy, but rather to let free economy like capitalism take a bigger route. They also tried glasnost, which was openness to public criticism. So before... In Stalin's reign, if you said bad stuff, you would be sent to like work camps. But now they allowed more freedom of speech and said you could start criticizing. And they also admitted to past mistakes, perhaps in the past few years. And eventually, in December 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed. Conservatives wanted to restore communism, but it didn't really work out. And they were crushed. And that just leads to today. So the Cold War, in recap, was about 50 years. Communism ultimately didn't take much of a stand, even though its influence is still felt today in many countries. And even today, the only two countries that have it are Cuba and North Korea. Raul Castro is the current dictator in Cuba, but he's really old. And North Korea, of course, still has Kim Jong-un, who's taking a pretty strong grip on the country. But these changes may happen in the next few years or next 50 or something years. But these are all results of the Cold War. And that's pretty much it about the bipolar world that we just happen to live right after. So thanks for joining me and hope to see you next time. Thanks.